It's ironic, isn't it, that this uh, gathering is at the University of California, Berkeley, because Peter was expelled from the university. He was expelled for unauthorized use of a bullhorn. Not a very scholarly rationale. And I'd like to uh, just go through what can we learn from Peter Camejo and his, uh, and his life. Because I, I know uh, he never really liked a lot of praise. He was so result-oriented. And I asked myself, well, what would Peter uh, like to have said here? Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to go through what I think are the lessons of his, uh, of his stay on Earth and his uh, commitment to justice, which uh, is the great work of human beings on Earth. And he reflected that every hour that he lived. The ancient philosopher Heraclides once said, character is destiny, and I would add personality is decisive. Peter Camillo had the perfect blend of those two. You cannot do what he did for so many years without burning out or becoming discouraged or becoming alienated unless you have an adaptable character and personality suited to confronting abuses of power. <clears throat> One might call it the civic personality. The first thing to learn from Peter is he was multidimensional. To know Peter is never to know him fully. You were always discovering everything that he did, and then he always did more. He never specialized, and I think that's what gave him the framework and the span of his interests around the world, up and down the hemisphere and around the globe. He was an advocate, a polemicist, a scholar, a candidate for public office, my vice presidential running mate in 2004. He was, he was a a person who changed careers, uh, going into socially responsible investments. Uh, he, had, he was a many splendor human being. The second thing he taught us was he was principled. Now it's easy to use that word if commitment to principle is not tempted by expediency or opportunism or material gain. He was the reverse of Oscar Wilde, who once said that he could resist everything but temptation. <laughs> Peter could resist temptation. It's hard to explain running with the person uh, for president who you never had to worry about on the political and economic issues. And, and Matt Gonzalez, But in testing the principal, you test whether they have a favorite choice of victims. And Peter didn't have a favorite choice of victims. And he didn't ignore other victims where he might have been criticized. He went into the stock uh, market world and uh, he was never corrupted and never co-opted. In fact, he bent it into his direction. Uh, as you will see from his book on socially responsive investing, that's a very detailed book. And that's what was remarkable about him. He was very, very detailed. Thirdly, he had the temperament. I always watched him when he really got excited in front of the audience. He never used foul language. Uh, he, he never described dark motivations, uh, which some, which some, in some ways upset me. <laughs> and, and he was very self-controlled, even though he waved his hands and he uh, was an orator. You can see he was really self-controlled. I once saw him take off uh, against organized religion here on, in Berkeley. That was the closest I've ever seen him to spin out of control. <laughs> 
He had a sense of history, which is rare these days. He had a sense of history, and if you read his book on the Reconstruction era after the Civil War and progressive movements in that incubating period, you would, you would know what I meant. He wanted more than anything else to write a book on the history of the Democratic Party because his thesis was the Democratic Party was the instrument of suppressing, co-opting, or sidelining fundamental progressive movements for social justice. And that uh, is something we And I think you'll see some of that in his autobiography, but he wanted to devote an entire book uh, to it, and he ran out of time. Fifth is that he was future-oriented. That, that's very important in terms of persistency against odds and against all kinds of defeats and losses. What it did was it prevented him from being uh, pessimistic and discouraged and burning out and shrinking his frame of reference, because when you're future-oriented, you have a pretty broad, broad uh, frame of reference. Sixth, he always renewed himself, and uh, he was always learning. You know, some people, they sort of learn until they're about 30, and then they run on the fumes. <laughs> for 30, 40 years. And you can see it, and a lot of the politicians are that way. And he was always reading and thinking and talking with people and challenging them. And he, he, he believed in intellectual tension. This is why it never bothered him at all to come up against very, very extreme right-wing people in a public uh, venue. He actually relished it. <laughs>